Greetings from Orthopedic Research Group. So uh, today we have Dr. Ravi Tejarudraju again with us to share his experience on Australian fellowships. So uh, Dr. Ravi is from Apollo Hyderabad, uh, knee and uh, sports surgeon there. Good evening, Dr. Ravi. Hi, hi, Giri. Uh, pleasure to uh, talk to you always. So yeah, looking forward to have a great discussion on Australian fellowships. Yeah, your Korean uh, travel and fellowships were uh, insightful for us. On that note, how did you start uh, applying to Australia? So what are your uh, thoughts before uh, doing the Australian fellowships? You had done Korean fellowships and you were in uh, US where you were exposed to some most advanced surgeries. But then you also wanted to uh, travel to Australia. So what are the reasons behind doing a fellowship in uh, another continent once again? Was that uh, thirst for knowledge or were you exploring different countries and you know making yourself more acquainted with the advanced technology what was the reason what was the thought process i think uh, definitely my uh, reasons behind traveling to australia were uh, very clear because if someone wants to settle back in india i think uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, getting very good clinical exposure hands on two countries i would suggest one is the canada and the other one is australia definitely us is uh, much extensive and uh, very well training programs are available but i think if someone is traveling to us to do some fellowship most likely he will settle there and you know uh, try to create a career pathway for himself in us uh, and it takes a lot of effort to go to us to do a lot of uh, you know usmle and a lot of research you have to do a lot of things to you know do those things but someone uh, really uh, wants to settle in their own country but still want to have that level of exposure in terms of clinical and surgical side so i think canada fellowships and australian fellowships are the best destinations to go because the system is very very robust and all the hospitals are very very advanced surgeons are very very skilled so uh, in that scenario uh, before going back and settling in india i decided that i wanted to go to australia because i wanted to have complete skilled clinically skilled as well as surgically skilled experience uh, before i start my practice also having said that i think australian fellowships also offer something like exclusive comprehensive robotic fellowships or maybe uh, comprehensive knee fellowships because uh, by the time i did my fellowship training in south korea and us i decided that i wanted to do only knee as a subspecialty so i wanted to do only knee as a as my uh, practice for the rest of my life so i decided to uh, do knee fellowship because uh, for knee itself has got a lot of opportunities wherein i can do robotic training knee preservation sports knee uh, sports injuries in the knee so a lot of opportunities that i can explore myself in in the knee arena so i looked for the best fellowships that are in australia and to my luck i have got uh, one opportunity in melbourne which is the best place to learn robotic fellowship wherein i was exposed to every robotic platform available at that point of time similarly i got an opportunity to do my fellowship in university of sydney where i was affiliated to i think four to five hospitals which are government affiliated hospitals where uh, again i was exposed to a lot of new work so uh, that's the reason why i flew to australia and uh, thanks to my professors where uh, i have learned a lot of new advances as well as a great surgical skill set okay so uh, we have again three four points from your elaborate answer so one is australia offers some unique comprehensive programs specific to uh, particular uh, regions of the body like knee shoulder with uh, cutting edge exposure to the technology and the other is uh, when you want uh, hands on experience so the best options available are uh, always there is us but it takes a lot of effort like clearing us amelia and it is a long pathway and the other easier but equally good options are canada and australia yeah you are absolutely right okay so how did you start applying what are the pathways like there is australian orthopedic association pathway is there something else through which you can apply to australia uh, for australia i don't think there is any other pathway you have to go through aoa so australian orthopedic association uh, has a website which lists all the fellowships which are available so once you go into that fellowship directory you get to see what all sub specialty fellowships you have and who are the professors you can work with and how long are they and what are what is the stipend they pay you uh, during that time so definitely i think there's no other pathway you have to go through aoa and then uh, all aoa fellowships are accredited fellowships all have uh, royal australian college of surgeons accreditation so i think they're all standardized fellowships and you will be offered only a fellowship which once they are accredited by this organization so in that way again your fellowships are very credible 
So there is a standardized pathway for applying through Austrian Orthopedic Association, and all the details are available on their website. Very true. Okay. So what is the timeline? So how early should we start applying? Uh, I think at least you should start applying two years before your uh, fellowship interest. Uh, some fellowships, like the one I did in Sydney, is almost uh, having a wait time of uh, three to four years. So uh, earlier the better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is the step by step process? First, you go and see the de- program details on the website, and then yes, yes, you need to go and see the program details on the website, uh, and then also kind of write an email to them, sending your CV. Or probably, I think the best way is to kind of meet one of those program directors in any of the conferences. They come in national level or international uh, conferences. Kind of interact with them and uh, express your interest, and uh, they will be able to let you know when is the next available. Slot. I think uh, once you know that, I think then you are scheduled for an interview. Once you are scheduled for an interview, then um, you will be given a wait list, or maybe if you are cleared also, then also at least it takes two to three years of uh, time to you know grab that fellowship. So they're always competitive, and uh, for people who go undergo training in UK. For them, the best fellowship destination is Australia because a UK trained surgeon uh, to get his fellowship training done to go to US, he need to clear USMLE, and even Canada fellowships are also competitive. So most of the UK trainees come to Australia to do their fellowship training because it's uh, more of NHS based kind of a practice. For them, uh, it's always a very favored destination, and definitely uh, UK trainees are more uh, preferred compared to international uh, fellows. Like Like from India or any other developing countries. So for that reason, you know, you need to be like applying way ahead, and also make sure that you have a very good uh, CV and very good uh, work that you have done before for Australian fellowships. Then I- also, I think it's important to clear your IELTS before uh, you know seriously looking into Australian fellowships because most of the fellowships, uh, if they are interested in taking you, first thing they ask is, uh, have you cleared your IELTS? And if you are not cleared, most likely they are not going to even call you for an interview. Okay, so the procedure is uh, quite simple. You go to the Austrian Fellowship site and then apply from there and uh, take it down from there. Better to have an introduction with the mentors before applying. So the English uh, examination clearance is a must. Yeah. Okay. So once you uh, apply and you get accepted, how is the visa process? Will we be guided through all the steps? In my uh, memory, I think uh, once Australian Orthopedic Association is accepts you, it will take care of your visa. Okay, so they'll do everything on your behalf. You don't have to worry about it. You just have to pay all the fee, and they'll only apply for you. And uh, you just have to uh, just keep in track on what's happening with your visa process. But it's mostly done by them. Okay. So, what is the clinical exposure there? What are the cutting chances? How do you look for uh, programs that offer good hands-on experience when you apply? So yeah, there are two kinds of fellowships uh, in Australia. So one private based practice uh, fellowships where people practice in the private hospitals. Uh, in that, you don't get much of cutting chances. But in public hospital affiliated fellowships, like you know these professors, all they have their own clinic, but they are affiliated to private hospitals. Like the one I did in Melbourne and Sydney. So my professor used to work in uh, University of Sydney affiliated hospitals as a professor. So. I used to have at least three to four engagements in a week, wherein I used to go and do the public lists on my own. So uh, you know you have to look for fellowships which has got public affiliations. You have to once you go into the Australian Orthopedic Association website, you get to see all those uh, lists, like you know which hospitals you work in, where are you affiliated, and how many days in a week are you affiliated to public hospitals. So uh, getting programs that are affiliated with public hospitals is the key. Yes. Yes. So how was how was the teaching experience and how was the learning experience overall there? Our teaching experience was really great because you know this in Australia particularly the training is very robust and uh, you know you are kind of walked you through every step on why uh, you're doing this and they teach you also and also if you are in a public affiliated fellowship then you have residents along with you so you all go for uh, journal clubs then you also have morning lectures. You have cadaver labs. Uh, you get to go to conferences in the country to travel some place, and then you know learn uh, in the conferences also. So, yeah, it's a very uh, holistically designed fellowship in Australia. So you are exposed to every part of it. In terms of 
learning experience i would say that australia is very much robust and you get to learn uh, how to do surgeries you are also exposed to latest advances you are also clinically moving forward and also you get opportunities to publish your research because australia i'm sure everyone knows that australian registry is one of the very sought after registry because most of the data is captured similarly even provinces also collect a lot of data to publish their work so in that way i think you can definitely publish a lot of good research because they provide you with a lot of good infrastructure so apart from academics uh, other important uh, opportunity that you get there is uh, research yes you get to access the registry of australian orthopedic association which yeah. gives us a lot of scope for research works yeah, true okay so uh, when you start applying how good your cv should be how, how are they looking at it is the connection important or the letter of recommendations important or uh, how See, i would say i would say connection is very very important because uh, when they meet you in person or if someone introduces you with a good recommendation i think it it carries more weight than anything but otherwise also if you have a very good cv with very good research background with very good clinical background then also they start considering your uh, profiles so if you are aiming for a very good fellowship which has got public affiliations i think uh, you have to have a combination of everything so ev- everything matters good yes. cv connection letter of recommendation everything everything so how's the lifestyle there so are you, are you paid a stipend in all the programs yeah most of the australian fellowships most not every every fellowship on australia if you are like going through aoa and proper pathway they all will be paid average stipend will be around around 70k to 80k per annum and it's very good enough to sustain yourself you can save some money if you are alone and if you're going with your family it's well enough to manage your family there it's a great country wonderful people they are very uh, welcoming and also like very supportive you get a lot of uh, food options particularly because there are a lot of indian people around uh, sydney melbourne and most of the australian cities you don't really miss your food or your culture because uh, there are like temples around restaurants around so it's much easier to live in australia particularly uh, and also expenses as i told you you'll be able to pull it off within your stipend uh, limit itself and uh, weather wise it's very much uh, closer to our weather so it's uh, winters are not very harsh so you should be able to manage yourself well uh, most of the part of the year okay so it's quite easier to live in australia yeah, yeah. and you are paid as well yes yes true the only bottleneck is getting into the program once you get yes. in the program everything is streamlined very true also since it's an english speaking country and most of the like people speak english you don't really find anything difficult okay that's very encouraging yeah. so what are the chances of immigration after you get into a fellowship program you feel that you, this country is damn good to live in and you decide to move on what is the what are the steps involved what is the timeline how difficult is it all the so uh, 15 20 years ago people have tried that pathway some of them were successful they have settled down and they have become uh, consultants and they're doing great job there but i think in the last 10 years i think it has become much difficult because uh, uh, even for australian graduates who have done uh, orthopedics getting a job is difficult so uh, and also after post uh, medical school getting into orthopedic training program is also very difficult so uh, with that uh, it has created a lot of bottleneck uh, for uh, immigrants particularly from other countries to establish their practice or to get into australia to settle down but there are pathways uh, it's not like they have closed it all so you've got uh, pathways in rsa which is royal australian college of surgeons so you can apply yeah, even now you can apply without a fellowship also you can apply but that will go through uh, screening uh, with the rsas board and they will give you three decisions one is they are not qualified to practice two they will say that he can but he needs to undergo supervision and he has to pass exams and uh, three he he they can give you like he is well competent and is good enough so he can practice i think the third one is very difficult to crack through because uh, usually you people who undergo training in developed country like india they usually don't give that but they might give you under uh, a supervision for few years with exams to be cleared but uh, it's again a time tested pathway it's not as easy as i just mentioned it to you it takes a lot of effort and a lot of uh, luck also to favor in your uh, way but i think it has become more difficult to get into that pathway in the recent years i think uh, what they look for is not uh, a sub specialty or what you got it. Uh, it, it they look for what is the need for you to come into this country 
are you going to serve in the area of need or uh, like you know are you well versed with every part of orthopedics so it's a very different part of screening criteria and uh, to some extent they are a bit racial also they don't want uh, you know asians or someone uh, to come into their country so um yeah it's difficult to get in you know particularly i have not come across people who have cleared through this pathways in the last 5 years from indian origin i think people from uk and other places might have done it but because uk training is almost similar to australian training for them uh, it is much easier to get into the country but even then i have friends who tried out that pathway and mentioned to me that it was difficult during the interview process and also to clear things for them and also covid has made uh, things much difficult in terms of uh, getting the applications moved to that level so the summary from uh, your very detailed answer is that they're a bit hesitant towards asians uh, coming to their country and becoming consultants first point the second is uh, the pathways are all quite di- have become quite difficult over years particularly after covid and uh, you should be very good to get into the consultant position there and the set of screening criteria that they have is they look at how you are going to serve australia true right true okay so uh, going back to the previous answer so you were told us how to apply so uh, what are the expenses from the point when you start applying to the point where you enter australia are there any expenses i mean initially i think you will spend around uh, again i think 5 to 6 lakhs as an investment kind of a thing some of the fellowships also ask you for the security deposit and also uh, applying to royal australian college of surgeons then apra australian health practitioners association and all these things will also cost you around 3 to 4 lakhs which is uh, i think uh, not reimbursable but i think uh, you know over and all i think once to get into the fellowship and enter into the country probably you have to spend 5 to 6 lakhs including your uh, flight tickets registrations and all those things but uh, the security deposit that you pay through to block your fellowship will be given back uh, maybe after once you join the fellowship but once you are into fellowship then you don't really spend much uh, more than what you are getting through by stipend unless uh, your expenses are more higher but Honestly I think most of the fellowships pay really good stipend so you really uh, can pull it off without spending anything from your pocket. Thank you Ravi I think I have asked you enough questions. One final question before we wind up the session. What are the research opportunities in these three countries? India, Korea and Australia. No there are uh, some youngsters and uh, residents who ask me if we can settle as a researcher in a foreign country say US or Korea or australia do a phd there and then come back how is the research scope in these countries uh, i think research is well appreciated definitely in us more than in any other country australia you can but again you are looked down you are not looked up because uh, it, it's more of like you know you're not successful as a doctor so now you're trying to do this pathway but in us although you start as a researcher people might think that you're looking for uh, maybe a better uh, opportunities like fellowships or anything else but uh, i think even exclusively becoming a researcher and making a career out of it is very much possible in us because uh, there are a couple of places in us where they offer really good positions like research director or maybe a research herd or something like that wherein you can head the department and a lot of funds available in those departments so if you are planning to switch your career to do research as a you know career pathway then i think us is the best destination okay so us is a destination when you think research is a career yes for sure thank you ravi thank you for the detailed answers on the korean and the australian fellowships I think it will be of immense benefit to our viewers. 